now we have sharpened broad, broad peaks in NMR spectroscopy so there are four concepts we have the first one is high temperatures and low temperature the second one is relaxation time third one is quadrifold nuclei and fourth one is high magnetic field and low magnetic field so this concept we know very well at high temperature but the best example for this high temperature and uh, magnetic field is DMF so when we have a DMF like this and the generation of a partial double bond character between the this carbon and nitrogen so now it will be like this this is methyl another methyl O and hydrogen okay at high temperature what will happen okay first we we'll talk about low temperature at low temperature we can differentiate this both methyl groups because this methyl group is cis to this uh, hydrogen and this methyl group is trans to this hydrogen and we have a one free hydrogen here so totally we will get a three lines here these two are for methyl groups and this is for hydrogen but when you see at high temperature what is what will happen so the the averaging of this three signal will take place finally we will get a single one signal one line only because these methyl groups get exchange and uh, this double bond character also there because of that we will get an average signal for three uh, for total uh, seven protons we will get a one average singlet at high temperature okay and now now we will talk about the high high magnetic field and low magnetic field okay so when we are talking about high temperature so that is equals to low magnetic field low magnetic field so when you are talking about low temperature so that is equals to high magnetic field okay so for at low at a low magnetic low magnetic field we will get a uh, average signal average one singlet at low temperature we will get a sorry at a high magnetic field we will get a three line signal okay so what is happening at high magnetic field the rotation will be avoided so the molecule can't rotate there they cannot be exchange of the methyl groups so because of that we will get a three line signal but at low magnetic field since the magnet is having less magnetic for power these methyl groups can easily exchange together so because of that we will get a a single line for low magnetic field sorry single for at low magnetic field at high magnetic field we will get a triplets okay sorry not this way like this because this is this peak is for three three proton this is for one proton okay so this is done this is done now we'll go for the relaxation time so what is the relaxation time so there is a uh, we have a ground state and excited state okay so initially the proton which is in the ground state it goes to the excited state and come back to the ground state so this time is called as a relaxation time in general so here when the relaxation time is high and low and this high and low it will be within the nmr time scale not more than nmr time scale okay so when the relaxation time is low in that time the nmr cannot read means like uh, imagine this is the 10 to the power of minus 8 nmr time scale is 10 to the power of minus 8 so when the nmr relaxation time is less less means very less than this that time the nmr can't read the uh, compound uh, clearly so in that case we will get a broad lines when we have a relaxation time is high so in that case low that means relaxation time is low means it comes very fast when relaxation time is low means it's coming very fast this this point you remember 
coming to the ground state very fast relaxation time high means means it spends some time here then it's coming back okay coming slowly okay so what 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 i am trying to say here the molecule goes from here to here and if it come back immediately in that case we will get a broad peaks broad peak because the nmr can't read the uh, compound clearly so when the molecule when the molecule spends some time in the excited state and then it come back to the ground state in that case the nmr time scale will be sorry the nmr can read the compound clearly in that case we will get a sharp peaks if uh, an relaxation time is uh, low that means molecule is coming very fast into the ground state in that case we will get a broad peaks when the relaxation time is high that means the molecule is spending some time in the ground excited state then it is coming down in that case we will get a sharp peaks and we will go for the quadrifold nuclei so what is a quadrifold nuclei so i explained this one in the mass bar spectroscopy the molecules which are having i value is greater than 1 by 2 so we call them as a quadrifold nuclei okay so molecules which are atoms sorry at nuclei which are having 1 by 2 spin they shows a sharp peaks and the molecules which are having a spin of greater than 1 by 2 they shows the broad peaks okay and this uh, when we have a like a uh, uh, 14 nitrogen and uh, 15 nitrogen if you record the proton and number for 14 nitrogen and 15 nitrogen for 14 nitrogen you will get a broad peak but for 15 nitrogen you will get a sharp peak it's because 15 nitrogen spin is 1 by 2 whereas 14 nitrogen spin equals to 1 so is this is belongs to the quadrupole nuclei so due to that reason uh, we'll get a, a sharp uh, sorry broad peak uh, for this compound here we'll get a sharp peak okay and this is also one more concept is there fifth one will be the electric field gradient i forgot to tell this okay and i will take two examples ammonia and nh4 plus so when we record the nmr for nh3 we will get a broad peak but for nh4 we will get a sharp peak because so electric field gradient efg i have explained in the mass bar spectroscopy so if it is a symmetrical that case will get a sharp peak if efg is unsymmetrical in that case we'll get a broad peak okay next if shape is uh, uh, if geometry is symmetrical symmetrical geometry in that case we will be having a electric field gradient is symmetric so when it is unsymmetric geometry we will be having a unsymmetric electric field gradient so here the shape of this compound is pyramidal and the shape of this compound is tetrahedral so this is symmetric and we we are having here electric field gradient is symmetric so due to that reason we will get a, a sharp peak for nh4 plus compound whereas for nh3 we will get a broad peak okay and next uh, when you record a nmr uh, for nh4 plus compound so what kind of peaks you may expect so here the spin of nitrogen is equals to one okay so here if you record one h nmr one h nmr so nitrogen couples hydrogens couples with this nitrogen 2 into 1 plus 1 so he will get a, a triplet here and for uh, uh, when you record the nitrogen uh, 14 nitrogen nmr in that case 2 into nitrogen couples with 4 hydrogens 1 by 2 plus 1 and here we will get a 5 length signal so what about the intensity and we have one more example that is hd so in the uh, deuterium nmr we will get a, a doublet this is off because deuterium couples with hydrogen hydrogen spin is off we will get a doublet 
whereas when we record a 1H NMR in that case we will get a triplet ok and here what we need to remember here also this concept comes quadrupole nuclear concept comes so we have a Pascal diagram that is this like this and uh, here here 1 1 2 1 2 plus 1 3 2 plus 1 3 1 1 1 1 plus 3 4 3 plus 3 6 3 plus 1 4 so like this we have a pascal diagram so this is applicable only when i equals to 1 by 2 if i is greater than 1 by 2 so this diagram is not applicable okay when we when when we when we are talking about 1 h nmr of nh4 plus we will get a triplet with a 1 is 2 1 is to 1 ratio okay and this will be this ratio 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1 because because here uh, ammonia is coupling with the hydrogen so hydrogen is a contrapole nuclear sorry non contrapole nuclei so because of that we will get a this uh, ratio and when you are talking about uh, deuterium nmr so here we will get a doublet 1 is to 1 ratio because deuterium is coupling with the non contrapole nuclei and when you are talking about 1 HN number of HD, so here one hydrogen is coupling with the quadrupole nuclear that is deuterium because of that we will get triplet you know 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio. And one last concept we have here that is a shift reagents. So what are the shift reagents? So when we are read, when we are, when we are talking about the a block elements, so we we'll, we read that uranium 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 compound acts as a shift shift reagent. Shift reagent means what? Like uh, and uh, so like how we can explain this? So this shift reagent shifts the NMR signal from lower frequency to higher frequency. Okay, the uh, the import the role of shift reagents are the they shift the NMR signal from the lower in lower in lower frequency to the so higher frequency. So how these are uh, shifting from the lower frequency to higher frequency? So the europium, we have two two example that is europium DPM three and europium F four D three. So these two compounds can we can use as a shift reagents. So how this mechanism is working? So these are the paramagnetic compounds, right? So paramagnetic compounds, para, paramagnetic metal. So this transfer one electron to the some X compound. Okay. Because of that, the uh, NMR signal is shifting from the low frequency to higher frequency. That means this is up field, this is down field, and this is up field. Okay. So when we have a shift reagents, those shift reagents shifts the signal from the uh, lower uh, frequency range to higher frequency range because one electron is going to the X compound because of that the shielding will increases on the compound. So because of that the peak, sh the peak is shifting towards the higher frequency region. Okay. So this is the importance of the uh, shift reagent. So this process is called as contact shift. Contact shift, the transferring of one electron from the uh, paramagnetic metal to the substrate is called as contact shift. So upon transferring like this, so this compound, this metal, further generates the secondary magnetic field. Means like already it's shielded when it's transferring a one electron to this compound. Again, we can say this is secondary magnetic field. We can say secondary second time is getting shielded. I will explain clearly. Initially, we have a substrate. This is having, imagine that this is having a comp uh, NMR peak at a 6 ppm. Okay. Now, 
the paramagnetic electro so this shielded okay shielded by its magnetic field because of it's having more electrons now there is a one electron transfer from the paramagnetic metal to the this substrate now it's what now what what is happening because of this electron again it's getting shielded so we can say this one as a secondary magnetic field so due to that reason the peak is shifting from the higher frequency region to sorry low frequency region to higher frequency region so this is the role of shift reagents so till now if you have any doubts you can comment in the comment box and if you like my video you can subscribe to my channel and also you forward to your friends thank you